today. All right, looking at these numbers, guess what? Many of these are uh, flattening out, are down from uh, the days before, or just plain old and out and out flat, even though it looks pretty bad, right? 28,000 new cases. These are April 20th cases. Why? Because I record this at a time of day when today's dates numbers, which would be the 21st, are not complete. But still, this was way over 2,000 for a number of days, so deaths and cases are all coming down. We're seeing this pretty much across the board. Pretty much every one of these numbers is at or below uh, where it was yesterday or the day before. And that's really good news, and it speaks to the fact that the social isolation, the distancing, the lockdowns, the uh, very economically damaging things that have happened have been working to limit the spread of cases. And in fact, when we look at this, over an entire world view here. This is total daily new cases. This is across the entire world. Here's China with that. Remember they did that one day. They're like, oh, we forgot to count about 18,000 cases. And that was huge news at the time, but pales in comparison to what's happened. And I think we can see this, this clear topping process that's happened here. I, I'm not ready to say that's coming down because it came down here, came down here. Looks kind of flat across that part right there. Um, but for sure, efforts that the world have been taking to limit new cases has been working. And why is that important? Because great piece of uh, summary reporting here out of the New York Times, excess deaths looking at the historical average. These are weekly deaths here that we're seeing. This is for France. This is their historical average here. And then this is what they actually saw here. And remember, these are excess deaths. So this isn't just COVID deaths. This is comparing the historical average of all the deaths here, say in the Netherlands, would look like this across the, the sweep of the year. Here it is in Indonesia. Here it is in, in Turkey. Everything tracks along for a little while uh, in January until you get out to about um, March or so, and then boom, this goes. Now, a little confusing because uh, I'm not sure if, yeah, I don't know why, but this one doesn't track all the way out to December. But at any rate, I think you can see the clear pattern here, which is, that there are many, many excess deaths. And of course, this is total death. So there are many people who are not dying because of COVID. People are not getting into car accidents because so many fewer miles are being driven. People aren't getting into boating accidents. They're not getting into airplane accidents. They're, they're not um, doing all sorts of things that can lead to death outside of the home. So those are on the negative side of adding to new deaths. COVID is on the positive side of adding to new deaths. And as well, um, there are a lot of other uh, new deaths that are showing up out there as well. Heart attacks, uh, really a lot of troubling news about heart attacks uh, really starting to show up. And is that because people aren't going to the hospital and because they, they're fearing COVID? Or is it because COVID is causing more cardiac events at home? We don't know the answers to those yet. But you can clearly see many, many thousands of deaths uh, per week now are showing up in excess of what you would consider normal and that's why it's very important to flatten that curve. Because if this curve had kept going up like this, we would see these curves just continue to climb like this too. What this chart is telling us is that eventually we get to see this happen as well. And then eventually this will come back down again. And that's if you can manage to get these new cases all the way back down again. I'm not sure that's possible. I'm not sure it's even advisable. I'm not sure it's something we should really strive for because we're going to have to learn how to live with this virus, and part of that is there will be excess deaths for a period of time, and it's not possible to get these down to zero, new cases down to zero, without completely crushing the economy, which will lead to many, many more deaths beyond what we're already seeing from COVID. So that's the balancing act. We've been talking about that for a long time. So we're going to have to just face up to the fact that this is a whole new situation we now have a virus among us. But every single case that they looked at here, um, we would see that there were many, many excess deaths compared to uh, the historical average, including Sweden. Um, and these, I believe, are, I think these come through maybe last week. So I'm not sure that, that they have the updated stuff that would take us through this week. All right, kind of looking now at the UK all weekly, um, weekly all-cause deaths. Thank you, Allison, for sending this along by email. Uh, this is weekly observed and expected number of all-cause deaths. So observed versus expected, all ages. Um, and uh, here they're noting as well uh, when were the flu dominant flus circulating. So the H3N2s, they had some runs at that. Uh, they also said H1N1 and H3N2. And those create these little bumps right here. So flu is absolutely a seasonal rhythm, rhythmic uh, killer in the UK. 
And uh, but here's here's where they are. And if we look at this number here, and we said mm, I'll just round off. We'll call that thirteen thousand, even though I know thirteen thousand is a little bit higher than this. Uh, but if we said from thirteen to twenty, that's like seven thousand additional weekly deaths from all causes. And remember, some deaths are being suppressed because people are staying at home, and other deaths are being enhanced by uh, having COVID. So this set, this really settles the dying of versus dying with COVID. These are additional deaths beyond what you would expect from all causes. So I think you can pretty well attribute everything in this amount up here is due to the effect of COVID. And that includes, of course, again, some suppressive effects as well as what COVID is doing in terms of enhancing deaths. And they balance out to this, which is 7,000 additional deaths per week in the UK. So we're starting to see that, yes, this is a very serious illness. No, it's not just like the flu. 